So is this going to be the ants or a bug's life of the 2022 Blue Underwater People Twin Films Showdown? Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 30th movie in the MCU, Marvel's 2022 superhero sequel, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Black Panther Wakanda Forever stars Letitia Wright, Angela Bassett, and Tenoch Huerta, and was directed by Ryan Coogler. Following the death of King T'Challa, it tells the story of Wakanda's new leaders as they strive to protect Wakanda from a formidable new external threat. Behind-the-scenes production information doesn't always have a place in film discussion, at least in terms of a review. But for Black Panther Wakanda Forever, it's truly a necessary piece of context. Following the immense success of the first Black Panther movie, plans for a second film were inevitable. A script was written, casting was announced, and pre-production was well underway. But everything changed when Chadwick Boseman died. His death not only had an impact on the creative viability of Black Panther 2, whose script no doubt centered around Boseman's T'Challa, but it also brought into question the moral viability of a sequel. Was it right to continue the franchise without him? Could it even be done? And if so, how? Eventually, a new script was written for the sequel, a challenge for any film, but this movie had to provide a very delicate balance, honoring the past while also moving forward. That balance became a driving force in this film. It's one of the more somber, serious MCU movies. That's not to say it's without its laughs and quips and big action sequences, but this film is steeped in quieter, more profound concepts than most other films in the MCU. I should note, however, that it's not steeped in grief. Grief is certainly a thematic concept at play here, both internal and external to the story, but it's not an overwhelming aspect of the movie, which I think was the right choice. There's a very emotional cold opening and an emotional final scene, but the story doesn't wallow in sorrow. It takes its grief and heartbreak and works it into a story about those who remain. It expands on many of the ideas from the first film, but takes them in an understandably different direction. The first Black Panther movie was a film with a very large cast. T'Challa was the focus, but it was never just about him. This was a character who was surrounded by a multitude of other secondary characters who were there to support him, not only from a story perspective, but also a leadership one. Wakanda Forever sees the expansion of this concept, and is even more of an ensemble film than its predecessor. We see greatly expanded roles for both Shuri and Queen Ramonda, but also see a lot of Okoye, Nakia, M'Baku, and even newcomer Riri Williams. Once again, the story focuses on Wakanda's role in the world, as well as what it takes to be the leader of Wakanda, but approaches both of these ideas from a different angle than the first film. This different angle is largely driven by the film's new antagonist, Namor, and his Talokan people. Now, I'll admit, when I first saw him and his little ankle wings introduced in the trailer at Comic-Con, I wasn't entirely sold on this character. The ankle wings never quite lose their silliness here, but Namor is easily one of my favorite villains in the MCU. He runs a little expositional at times, but his backstory is interesting, and more importantly, his motives are clear and consistent. He serves as a villain in this film, but his role really does feel like one of an anti-hero at times. In this film's conflict, we naturally find ourselves siding with Wakanda, but it's an interesting situation, and one that could be very different with a slight perspective shift. If we had been introduced to Namor and Talokan first, would the conflict here seem quite so cut and dry? Wakanda Forever's script is not as tight as the first film's. It's got a bit of a bloated runtime, running nearly 30 minutes longer than the first movie, and while I don't think the length is necessarily felt, the negative impact on the pacing is. Things feel a bit jumpy at times, largely thanks to some highly underutilized characters and some even more unnecessary subplots, key among them, once again, surrounding Agent Ross. Thankfully, the CGI and action are both at least slightly improved over the first movie, though there's definitely still some oddness to the dichotomy between low and ultra-high tech at play in Wakanda. 
As with the first film, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is a movie steeped in culture. Once again, we see a celebration of Wakanda and the African cultures that inspired it, expanding upon the world building set forth in the first movie. But we see further expansion here, not just within Wakanda, but to a second parallel culture, that of the Mayan descended Talokan. The parallels are interesting, both in cultural and story contexts, providing this film with a more expansive scope than expected, and setting up for some very intriguing things in the future. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one is Namor. He was definitely not a character I had particularly high hopes for based on the trailer, but wow was he a pleasant surprise here. I've enjoyed Tenoch Huerta's performances in past films, so it was nice to see him in a larger role this time around, and I think he did a great job. This is a character that had the potential to come off as really silly thanks to some aspects of his design, but it all manages to work here. Although he's a very intense and driven character, he's pretty well-rounded and understandably motivated for an MCU villain, making him a compelling antagonist. The second pro has got to be the themes. The thematic component was one of the best elements of the first film as well, and this movie expands on some of those same themes. But we see a bit of a redirect here, thanks to the emotion at play with this movie. There is an element of grief here, and although it's not overpowering or overwhelming of the story, it does drive character decisions throughout. There's also the introduction of the idea of parallelity. We see parallels not only between the Wakandan and Talokan cultures, but also between their leaders, which leaves us with some thought-provoking concepts and questions to ponder. On the con side, the biggest issue has got to be the unnecessary subplots. And as simple of an idea as this sounds, it's actually a fairly multifaceted problem. For one, the inclusion of some of these extra subplots unnecessarily adds to the runtime, extending it about 30 minutes longer than it could have and probably should have been. Along those same lines, these subplots mess with the pacing. This is an already naturally slower paced film than its predecessor, with a lot of dialogue heavy emotional or thematic moments, but some of these subplots just drag the story, stomping on the brakes at some of the most inopportune times. I don't want to dive too much into the content of these subplots, because I want to steer clear of spoilers, but as with the previous film, basically anything involving Agent Ross easily could have been cut from the film. Before I give you my rating recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, three and a half out of five paws. This is an emotional follow-up understandably taking things in a different direction while also expanding on some of the same ideas and themes as the first film. I would recommend Black Panther Wakanda Forever to people who enjoy more somber superhero films. This is not the typical bombastic, quip-filled MCU movie. It still has its occasional moments of humor and action, but this is a slower, more thoughtful look at grief, differences, and unexpected similarities. Fans of the first Black Panther film may feel a bit mixed on the direction the story takes, but I think most people will find it a very emotional tribute. If you liked Black Panther Wakanda Forever, I've obviously got to recommend the first Black Panther. That movie really sets the stage for where Wakanda is during this film. It's obviously got a different focal point, with Chadwick Boseman's T'Challa at its center, but there are some similar themes and some equally engaging world building. If you're interested in another film with extensive world building, you might want to check out Avatar. It may seem like an easy comparison with the blue characters in the upcoming sequel, but it's also got some thematic similarities as well, focusing on the outside world or other worlds encroachment on an indigenous population. If you're interested in another film with a Mesoamerican focus, you should check out The Road to El Dorado. This is an animated movie, and one of DreamWorks Animation's earliest, focusing on a pair of Spanish conmen in search of the City of Gold, who find that there's a lot more to this culture than they thought. And if you're just looking for another water-based superhero film, you might be interested in Aquaman. 
This is a DC superhero movie and part of the DCEU, focusing on Arthur Curry and his connection to Atlantis, which in the Marvel world was also the original homeland for Namor. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Black Panther Wakanda Forever? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite movie featuring an underwater civilization? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this review, I'd appreciate if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe while you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.